This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today in the arena, waiting room, will something get banned early next week? Will that ominous tweet from Wizards of the Coast actually turn out to mean something, or have we all been played? I'm not sure. I am confident that a certain elder giant in Simic colors is on the chopping block, though. People have their eye on Uro Titans of Na Titan of Nature's Wrath for good reason. The logic is that people would not ban Cobra, that wizards would not ban Cobra or Omnath because they're from the new set. But Uro, having served its purpose and tortured us long enough since Theros was released, could be banned. So, in a way, what to do with these videos over the weekend, I I like playing standard. I really don't give up on it. It's strange. I, I can play it forever, it seems like, no matter how bad it gets. And I like to compete and try to solve it. And the smaller the format, typically the more I enjoy solving it. Solving historic is much more frustrating the more cards are in it. The same thing with modern and pioneer for the paper and MTGO crowd. But when it comes to standard, there's only so many cards, and 5 set standard is the smallest that it gets, so I really love 5 set standard trying to find the neat decks and cards that do the work. And today, since Uro may be on Uro's last legs, we're going to run Sultai. And this Sultai control deck has game against all the decks in the format, which makes it a really good choice in my opinion, for a ladder climb or going into Mythic if you want to be something other than an aggro mage. So this deck, the initial build I found on MTG Melee, it performed well in a tournament, and I tweaked it for the best of one because that's what I do. I left the sideboard intact for people who want to check that out, but the main deck, we moved around like some of the Ashioks to be more Garricks, and we added another Gargaroth uh, to try to have more game against Mono Red and creature decks, but there were some things that I really liked and kept the same, like the one Scavenging Ooze, which I found very playable, the one Eliminate, which I found very playable, three Agonizing Remorse is a very good number for the deck, so yeah, uh, really, really feeling this build. The three Extinction events seems to be good for this sweeper because you dig through your deck a lot with Uro, but it really is Uro control. Like, if I could tell you exactly what the deck is, if I could break it down into just a thing, it should be called Uro Control because it's a control deck. You counter things, you kill things, you take things out of their hand, you play some Planeswalkers, you play Sweepers, and uh, you play Shark Typhoon. You make sharks, but all the time what you're doing is just running them out of resources, building up your own graveyard by expending resources, and then bringing back Uro and eventually a protected Uro, either because you took the removal from their hand or because you can counter it, will bury them in card advantage and life so they can't race you. So Uro control, and in many ways, <clears throat> the last ride for Uro potentially for this particular standard. I haven't picked out what deck I'm going to do tomorrow. Also, Wizards, that tweet was ominous. It, it said early next week, Monday, Tuesday, who freaking knows? I don't know. But when it does come down, come find me live on Twitch. I usually try to go live as soon as possible to talk to people about the ban and get reactions from the community as well as myself. It's a very exciting in its own twisted way ban talk. So anyway, that's all the deck is. It's a pile of cards and then Uro. It gets to cheat on land a bit. We have 21 lands in our mana base because we get to run Hagara Mauling, Jawari Disruption, and Tangled Florahedron, which double as lands as well. Honestly, I would, I think I'm interested in getting more Maulings into the deck. This card has impressed me a lot. Having, in best of one, having a removal spell stapled to a land seems really good because you don't know how aggressive the opponent's deck is, but you do know that they will probably plan to kill you with creatures. And say against a Shark Typhoon, when they make a giant shark at instant speed, you can maul it because instant speed. Anyway, uh, today 
we're going to do a quick plug for the Arena Craft Podcast. This is a weekly podcast that I am the co-host of, along with Arjuna. You can get our thoughts every week on MTG Arena events and metagame. It focuses, as the title might suggest, specifically on Arena. So if you're an Arena player, why aren't you listening to the Arena Craft Podcast? You can find the most recent episodes on all the platforms, like all the platforms, the Spotify's, the Apple, the Google, the Stitcher. You can also find out more at arenacraftpodcast.com. And if you don't want to leave YouTube, the Arena Craft YouTube is right there. And just search for Arena Craft. It's also on my channel. So like if I go to my channel, it's like one of the suggested feature things over here. And you see that the video forms do get views every single week. So check it out. Thank you very much for supporting the podcast. And let's dive in. Let Sultai Uro Nonsense begin. First game of the day, and we're trying to fight our way back into the top in the numbers. So, hand has the colors, hand has the removal. Let's dance. Come at me, Mono Red. Nay. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's throw him a swamp curveball. Like, you don't know. You don't know. Black deck could be anything. Oh, boy. Lotus freaking Cobra. That's got to die. First test passed, we have killed the Cobra. All right. We've got to do this three-color nonsense. It would be really nice to find a Gargaroth and put pressure on them right away. This hand isn't particularly great for dueling them. It's also possible I should have held up Heartless Act, but there's no way they can do Omnath and hit a Landfall trigger, so I think it's fine. Cobra. Cobra returns. All right, so this will be this will be an island. Let's have double black available. Get dead. A little stick there could be a bone crusher giant. No Omnath. Wait, yes Omnath. Bang. <laughs> Just keep killing it. Up to four. We could cycle this and have Uro back next turn. I actually think that's worth it. So that we can try to be proactive here instead of being as reactive as we've been. That's enough. That's enough. The opponent says, I'm not playing against that. Wow. Kill their Cobra, kill their Cobra, kill their Omnath, and Salty Scoop. Hmm. Hand is okay. Gets out the Gargaroth, has the Extinction Event, Ugin. Ugin's kind of a mulligan, but I think we'll try it and play the Disruption first. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I should I should just play the disruption. The opponent might even play around it if we have more blue sources open since we have nothing to do next turn. Hit him with the sticker. Yeah, they're not going to play around it. Um, we can go fetch green now though to cast Uro, which I that will have to do. We need to draw more land as soon as possible. Really? Adventure. Oh yeah. Adventure is still a deck. Extinction Event is good against them. I don't know that we actually deal with Clover so much as look at it and be sad. It can't be the matchup we want. Ah, uh, so the first Extinction Event can get rid of this, but we could also just cut this off now and not let our opponent draw a card. That's a tough... That's a tough one, right? Hmm. 
Let's try to keep their draw awkward. Maybe they miss a land drop, maybe they have a wrong color. And having to draw into it will slow them down. Okay. Fun. Well, we drew our land drop. We could ex I, I think now we need to let them play a beast and then extinction event the innkeeper and the beast, so we may as well shark typhoon this turn. Try to get our Gargaroth mana. I guess they have a Bone Crusher. And if they do, they didn't piece together that we're probably making a shark. Let's see if they attack with the Innkeeper. Yeah, I thought so. That's okay, we can eat this token and then Extinction Event on Odd. Gargaroth mana is ready. But we want to make sure we extinction event the odd first. Also, Gargaroth looks really bad against Brazen Borrower. This is not really the matchup for four Gargs. But maybe the maybe the shark would draw out a borrower. Hmm. They don't seem too interested in that. Let's go for it. Hmm. Whether or not to be aggressive here is interesting, because a Brazen Borrower, and then they attack for five. I think we do have to end the game, though. I think they outvalue us in the long run. So we're just hoping to untap with our Gargaroth intact here, and then it's game on. Rip. Did they have to? Alright, go fetch something fun. It should be something that kills the Gargaroth. Let's see what they get. If they get Ugin though, I'm going to I'm going to laugh. Mythos. So they want to copy my Gargaroth? That's a token. I guess it would fight the Gargaroth and kill it. So that does adequately handle Gargs. Which is terrible for us. Um hmm. I guess it's time to do Uro things and try to find more answers. And hold up neutralize. That's not bad. It has to wait until next turn. I guess we can block the token or we can keep attacking. Let's hold back the token. Love struck beast. No, thank you. Now Uro's ready. Opponent's last card is a land. So, do they keep on top? They put on the bottom. Alright. Ready to fight. Let's bring out the Uro. Because it gets value, and if the opponent kills it with the Mythos, that's okay. Shark Typhoon. We could fire off one of these Blood Chiefs Thirst on the token just to do it. I think that's a bit wasteful here. Let's sit tight. We're still in a little bit of a grind. And we know that they have Brazen Borrower, which we'd want to block with the Shark. Yep. Try 
Trigger, trigger. Where's the triggers? There they are. I guess the opponent had to order them. It's not a land. It's the worst. The absolute worst. Okay. Block there. Take seven. Ugh. But we'll, we'll try to come back from there. It's a long road, but we can do it. I say we cycle this. We're going to need all of our resources. Cards and Graveyard, two. Six life, Clover on the battlefield. If we play this and they have a Brazen Borrower, we lose. I think we're just in that spot anyway. We also have Ugin next turn, potentially, if we play this tapped land. Oh, I know. We can go fetch green and we can cast this as a mana dork so it can potentially block. That is a way to get there. Alright, does the opponent draw into another borrower? Beanstalk, okay. We've got a close one, that's for sure. It's a land. They get their giant. We're going to have to Blood Chief's Thirst that. We could play Ugin and sweep everything, but I don't like that at all. We don't have double black. How did it come to this? How did it come to this? Alright. How do I get it? Well, I think I get Ugin on the board and start bolting out their creatures. To nine means can minus and exile the beanstalk giant. Shark can take one for the team. Here comes the one four. And what's this card? Probably a land. Not much else would make sense. That's our other black source. We can take out the giant that way now. Let's attack... Well, I'm going to go get the black source. Or get the swamp out of the deck so I don't draw into it. Let's attack with the Gargaroth. Part of me really wants the life, just to get some space. But... Mm, hard not to take a card here. Really hard not to draw a card. When it takes the hit. So if we go for three, we can exile all this stuff. And then Thirst can hit this. And yeah, I like that a lot. New Garg. Reality is unwritten. Oh, it's a showdown. No! Oh, but if that had been a turn sooner, we would have been dead to fling, so I should be thankful. How are you going to solve the problem? You got two Gargaroths and an Ugin to face. Your own Ugin, of course. Classic. 
<laughs> I mean, you can't get Spyglass and name Ugin if you pick an Ugin. Wait, the opponent's at 13. They're, they need something to just live, or they're dead. Teferi, Master of Time? Phasing one of these is not what you want to do. Not if you plan to sweep them with Ugin. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know about this. Okay, so they plan to phase one of these, right? If they don't, they just have a Teferi on the board, by the way. Tossed a great henge. We could Ugin minus four, put them to one. I, again, I want them to phase something, right? So we want to force them into phasing it, so that even if they use Ugin, it comes back. There's the phase. Now we can bolt away to fairy. Time's up. Three three doesn't really help me. The three life. Is there a way the opponent could top deck the damage? How much land do they have? One two three four five six seven eight. They could top deck a bone crusher giant and win. If I put an ooze out, does that stop that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't. We're also at six in the graveyard. We could bring out Uro to get exiled. That gains the three life. So that means I can draw a card here. Or I could just not expose the Uro. Let's draw the card. Oh, and that's why. That's why. Very high potential upside. Oh, we got you now. We got you now, Big Daddy. I don't need to hear about Ghostfire. Good game. Whew. Man. Fighting those adventure decks. Oh my goodness. It's always such a roller coaster. Here's our green source. Here's a lot of blue black. The Gargs. The opponent goes first. We've got removal, hand disruption. I think it's all keepable. Now, how soon do we need a green? I'm debating whether or not to fetch or to play this tapped. I think that this right now couldn't be a very good spell. Let's fetch. Well, I like this start, whatever it is. Thank you for giving me time. I'm used to being behind by at least two creatures on board at this point in the game when I'm on the draw. It's very not very normal. All right, I think I want to, there's no way to keep a hand like this without a good three drop. So I want to hit it with the disruption and then we'll agonizing remorse the turn after that, take their next best card. I guess this will do. Slow down there, buddy. Can't have you doubling up your mana production on me. If we play this as blue, we can neutralize whatever the next thing is. Same strategy as last turn. Hold Agonizing Remorse until we either have the spare mana or are out of reactive cards. Nothing. What's going on? Patience. Missing the second green source for the Gargaroth, but we've got an Ashiok. Nothing. Well, next turn we can have Neutralize and play the Remorse. That's a good draw, too. The ominous manual tapping. Well, it's that kind of deck. I guess they really needed their Cultivate. So, if we get rid of the escape, their hand is pretty awkward. If we get rid of the Omnath, I guess we can counter the Omnath if they pull it off, but next turn we can take the Omnath. Uh, 
That's some awkward mana they've got. Blood Chief's Thirst can hit the Terror, so we don't need to worry about that. Ugin's a ways off. Bone Crusher Giant's a bit of a pain. What we want to do is get the Gargaroth. We want Gargaroth to get on the field to fight the Bone Crusher Giant. Because I don't want to worry about that card. We draw another Cultivate. Do we let that go? No, we do not. And now I think this is a good spot to just slam the Ashiok. Try to get it going. Listen to my whispers and sing no more. My kin are delightfully friendly. It's a tap land. Right, here's the giant. Opponent holding the fetch, so we need to take away what? The Omnath? They can't play the Omnath right now. They have to fetch first, which means they probably don't have a land drop. On the other hand, we could just Blood Chief's Thirst this and attack. The opponent plays Terror, we can bounce it. If the opponent plays the Omnath, they get a card, which is really frustrating. Alright, I think it's Agonizing Remorse into Uro, and I think the Remorse takes the Omnath, but we'll play the Uro first since it draws a card. It might change the rest of our plays. And Ashiok make another 2-3, threaten the ultimate. If the opponent casts Escape to the Wilds, we can cast cards from their exile, which is hilarious. They might need to Storm's Wrath next turn to keep Ashiok from ultimating anyway. And if they do that, they lose their Bone Crusher Giant. Lurks among us. Now, right now, they don't have too much in exile, but what they have in exile is really good. Here we go. The opponent is fetching. And they go for Terror. Man, I wish I could have... Uh... <laughs> I guess we'll pick this off. So, if we exile a Storm's Wrath, maybe we could Storm's Wrath their terror. One way or another, we'll deal with terror. A red cap melee? Really? That's hype. That's hype. Thank you for putting the answer into your deck. <laughs> Here's a fresh five. It's very reactive five. Oh my goodness. Is this what it feels like? I've got a Cobra. I have removal for that. The Storm's Wrath will take that. All right, play this land, make mana, use mana. Cast Garg. I guess I'll fetch and deal you another four. Because I can. Oh, baby. If this isn't just sweet justice, some of you, some of you must be, like, dancing a little bit right now. It's okay. Get up. Run around your room. Dance. Bang. Game. If we had drawn any land there, there was lethal damage anyway. Oh my goodness, that that was refreshing. We'll give it a try. It's a little slow and the mana might be clunky, but I think it's worth it. See what happens. Probably cycling neutralized, so I might fetch a black source with... Number 115 on a double mull has to be mono red. 
Monored, Teamer Adventures, and uh, Omnath. Those are pretty much the those are the decks I think about when building decks. Sometimes Rogues. Rogues is a much higher percentage in best of one. Seems to have some love there. Okay. Rogues it is. Just in case they're going to mill all of the swamps in my deck. Let's go grab this now. All right, scavenging ooze. I need you to carry the day. Please fill my graveyard with creatures so I can has big ooze. Tap land, good. Says go, good. Ooh, Uro already ready already. Uro versus rogues. The great fear of the rogue deck. Let's just take it slow. Soaring Thought Thief has arrived. So that's going to be a trigger. Which puts it up to six. If the opponent attacks, okay, it goes a few more. But, if we do this... We're on eight, and then if we eat something, it's not enough. So, not quite there. But we should still eat something just to do it. And it should be a type that's... Yeah, we should focus on the types that might make the... What is it? The um, scavenger better. And no blocks, right? No. Still too valuable. Good draw. Play this for a tap blue source. I don't know if we keep eating our own graveyard here. I think better to race the opponent a little. Hagadim's Awakening tapped. Backup Thought Thief. Looking good for the opponent. No creature. Trigger. No creature. But they don't have counter magic open. So Uro's coming. Draw a Mauling. Another play is to jam the Gargaroth, but I think shrinking the graveyard has to be a priority. Instant enchantment, planeswalker, instant sorcery. I'll survive this. Good draw. Blood Chief's Thirst, doing work. Tamal or not Tamal? Let's hang on to it. Nine cards in the graveyard. The opponent has to deal with the Uro, but they still have an ooze they have to deal with. They're gonna slam a Mimic. Mimic's a good one, and Mill's four here, but the opponent is falling into a bit of a trap with the event eventually. They want to trade off with this Uro, but we could maul them. Yeah, I think that's really good. Plus, for the first time ever, I'm going to cast the mauling when the opponent has no basic lands. So it's only three mana. Ugin. All right, so we have one green to use. Let's eat the Gargaroth out of our graveyard. Actually, the opponent has mauling. Yeah, but they're not going to play it. Ooh, 
Well, our graveyard's already huge, though. Alright, let's work on their graveyard, then. They're the one under pressure. Here's the scavenger. Need to remove that. Can we find a way? I mean, they're dead. Yeah, we can name Odd and Ooze gets the job done. Sorry, Uro. Not the way I wanted wanted things to be, but I'll take the win. Ah, yes. Hearts, purple hearts all around. Purple hearts all around. Back in the top 1,000. What a strange hand. And on the draw, but it does have remorse, it does have heartless act, it does have a counter, but it's all tapped land on the draw. You just can't keep these. Keeping these is a death sentence so often. <sighs> One untapped land. All right, so we play this, we play this, we cycle this, we play Uro, maybe we curve out. What do we put back? Probably the Ashiok. No, it's the Typhoon, right? No, we need to cycle that to make sure we draw land. It'll be the Ashiok. Giant killer on one. White aggro. Extinction event loves it. If we can get to our mana our mana. We drew we put a planeswalker on the bottom. We drew a more expensive one. Boros. Knights. Good. We need to play it as black. And let's get rid of this worthy knight before a million one ones pop out. Try to get the opponent onto odd creatures for the extinction event. Well, Emberth Shield Raker says not so fast, but that's a good trade with our Shark Typhoon. So we can try to Typhoon block that thing. The other play was Uro. I think Uro can wait. Rats. That is unfortunate. Alright, well, I'll just block it for the life. Backup event is good. We could event here and name even. Might as well. The opponent's only on two cards. We just need to drag this game into deep water. The longer it goes, the better off we should be. Not a good time to get greedy. Now, will the opponent play around another event? The shield breakers are looking pretty sad. The opponent came prepared for adventure. They got something different. Set up for the Garrick here. Four cards in graveyard. This is number five. There's an acclaimed contender. A little bit of value. Fervent champion. All right. They're split across odds and evens. So now we really want to reach Ugin. Remorse can go after the last card in hand. Event can get rid of the odds. Yeah, odd, odd, odd. J leaving them with just a shield breaker. That's, that's really good. Red cap. The Widow Weasel. All right, let's get another green. Or do we get another blue? I'll take the blue. It's Covert Go Blue, not Covert Go Green. Land off the top. Uro could try to draw us up to the Ugin, or we can play the Garrick. Let's make the opponent deal with the Uro.
Oh yeah, the Planeswalkers are ready to rumble. And the opponent can't bear to watch any longer. A dark day for the Knights of Boros. Oh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. Miss a few land drops and you lose. But if I draw any blue or green source, this hand becomes very good against aggressive decks. We have to really wait on cracking the Fabled Passage. Because we don't know which one we need. And that's when Mono Red strikes. This is Mono Red. They play Mono Red. Always playing Mono Red. I think we let this be. Because we end up naming Odd really often because of Annex, so we want to get the Robber of the Rich with the Blood Chief's Thirst. That is going to rob. No! I needed that! Oh, man. Alright, so Island gone. Let's go get an Island, and let's draw the green source. The shuffler's fine. What a troll job with the third Uro. Two consecutive Uros off the top. Heard you like Uro. Heard it's broken. Here you go. Green source. It's kinda. Not exactly what I had in mind. I think that the game is bugged, because every time my opponent has a Hellhound, they hit every land drop. I think that's messed up. We all know they don't run very many. So close. So close, but so far. All we needed was the island that the robber stole, and we would have made it. But now we're going to die to the Embercleave. I mean, is that just a flex? I guess there's no need to do math. <laughs> okay, dude. Missing a color, but lots of removal. Is this a hand? I'll keep it. That, that's a CGB slogan. Does this hand have any magic cards in it? I guess I'll keep. Our opponent also of the Triome, which I don't think I've ever started a game on one of these. It would make my life so much better. Looks like we get the mirror. Bull. At least we're ready for Uro. Interesting. Our hand is definitely gr terrible for the matchup. Oh, they really want to get rid of that ooze. They really don't like oozy boy. They got Uro's burning holes in the pocket. Can I have an Uro? I want to draw my Uro. Okay. It's a very heartless act when you don't actually want to draw it. Ashiok. Okay. Close your 
mix two three. The shadows awaken. Now we start flinging our heartless axe at things because they don't have targets otherwise. Come on, deck. My deck is a troll. Come on, deck. Committed to feeding me the worst possible cards for the situation. Big Garg, okay. Hmm. So we could name Odd with this and it would get rid of this, but not this. And we sort of want this in the graveyard to make this a 3 so it can attack through the 2 3. So. Destroy target creature with no counters. And nom nom. I'm losing it. This is the most Magic the Gathering sequence of Magic the Gathering I can ever remember. Interesting. Surrender every morsel of fear. <gasps> Ooze is trying so hard to keep me in this freaking game. Does the opponent have Ugin? They might. They didn't cycle that land, which I thought they'd want to. Neutralize. All right. Enough. Enough. This two-game losing streak has been absolutely nasty. Like, unbearably nasty. But this hand is good. It's been a minute since the hand was good. Let's go with the black source, since we know for sure we're casting one of these next turn. Champions! Alright, let's take their annex. I guess we can't take both of their annex. We can take an annex, though. We could take the cleave, but then they just end up making a whole bunch of creatures off the annex. Alright, so before they get into combat, kill you, makes another count, another little token. Because the opponent uses mis mid mismatched arts, we know they drew another land. So next turn, they're going to play a cleave, and they're going to have an extra mana, so we can't counter it. We should probably work at getting a large shark and a Garrick, so let's do the Uro thing. Mauling is here. So I guess we want double black now, and we'll have double blue from this. We still need double green. Oops. I guess I don't have a choice there. In that case, do I play the Mauling? No, we play this still. Sword is lit, ladies and gentlemen. Another one drop. Nice. Um, hmm. How to do it? I guess if we block and kill this, well, the opponent can activate castle, so we're not sure to block and kill that. We definitely want to play this tapped so that we can have a Garrick next turn. We name Odd, we take six. Ugh. But then Garrick kills... Yeah, then Garrick comes down and kills the token. If 
four cards in graveyard. We still need another green before we can think about getting Uro back. All right, miss on a creature, please. Thank you. Fox no bone crusher giant, please. I hunt bigger game. Try not to lose your head. I might need this if they do have a bone crusher. Let's go, wolf pack. Shock, okay. I'm going back to the woods. Play you, hold up a counter spell. We don't have another green source. <laughs> Mana, why you be so mean? There's the annex. Here's the counter. I guess they've had enough. Whew. Well, it wouldn't be this deck without missing a color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. I get it. Play magic. Definitely wouldn't be this deck without missing a color. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Come on. Can we run so much mana and never have it? Welcome to my Golgari Splash Uro control deck. Great, Omnath. Yay! Maybe we will still play a game. Bang. a lot of temples for your Omnath deck, but maybe it's like Adventure Splash Omnath. Don't have an instant speed way to kill the next one, so we'll play the Uro this turn. Fun. Well, they're not going to make the mana. Banzai. Watch out. Get awful dark. Let's play the mauling. Enough of you. We might need a lot of lands to stay in this game. Nice. They said go, we drew neutralize. So now we're gonna kick back and wait for something to counter. Although another blue source and playing Ashiok would be sweet. I'd wonder how many of those they have. It's probably not a small amount, to be honest. Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness, running neutralize in that spot is insane. It, that's not. Sure. Let them make the decision here. Yep. <gasps> Denied! Let's save the Eliminate and use a Thirst on this, I think. Hmm. Think about that for a second. 
We're probably going to play the Ashiok. So Ashiok plus Thirst is a fine turn, but we're not holding up Eliminate if they get another Cobra. But if we get an untapped land, we do. Interesting. Wolfpack. So if Ugin comes down, we'd want a way to attack it. So I think we'll hold up the shark instead. And making a 4-4 also helps put the opponent on a clock. Having a Lemonade available can kill a Cobra. <clears throat> Whew. Uh, I don't know what all that hand was. Was it all land? <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe they were just tilted by all the neutralizes. <laughs> 